So in this video, we're going to do an application of improper integrals and, and we're going to derive the formula for circle circumference. <clears throat> so just as a, as a recall, remember that the formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times the radius of the circle. And if we have a circle of radius r, we know that the formula for that circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and not really formula, but, but the relationship that describes the circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. <clears throat> so if we want to know the distance around a circle or the circumference, what we could do is apply the arc length formula, and we could do 4 times the integral for the arc length in quadrant 1. So I could go 4 times the integral and I would want the integral for uh, quadrant 1. So we'd run from 0, we'd run over the interval from 0 to r. And remember that the arc length formula is going to be the square root of 1 plus uh, the function, uh, the derivative of the function squared. So in this case uh, we could solve it for y. We could get y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. And so we would uh, in here do y prime quantity squared dx. So this would be the arc length formula uh, for the circumference around an entire circle. The derivative is probably easiest gotten from this form using implicit differentiation. So if we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, the derivative with respect to x would be 2 times x plus 2 times y times y prime by the chain rule or implicit differentiation. The derivative of the radius would be 0 and then we could just solve it for y prime. So we'd subtract 2x from both sides divide both sides by 2y. The 2's would cancel so we would wind up with negative or the opposite of x over y. And in the arc length formula you have to square the derivative so we would square this and that would give us y prime squared equaling x squared over y squared. <clears throat> and then we need to uh, what we would need to do is then replace y squared with this squared. So we, if we square this, we know that y squared is going to equal r squared minus x squared. In fact, you could just subtract x squared from both sides of this and get y squared equals r squared minus x squared. And then in here we add 1 to both sides, so it would be 1 plus. And if we add 1 here, we'd want to get a common denominator with that. So to add 1, we could just do r squared minus x squared over r squared minus x squared. And when we simplify this, we'll have r squared minus x squared in the denominator. And we'll have x squared minus x squared is 0. So we'll be left with just an r squared. And here's the 1 plus y prime squared that goes under the square root sign. So we would get 4 times the integral from 0 to r of 0 to r and we'd have the square root and it would be r squared over r squared minus x squared and this is a dx kind of thing <clears throat> and then the numerator will simplify we know the square root of r squared is just r so we would wind up with 4 times the integral from 0 to r of just r over the square root of r squared minus x squared and this is a dx and the r the radius is just uh, treated as a constant so we can factor it out so we get 1 over the square root of r squared minus x squared so the issue with the issue with this integral and what makes it <clears throat> what makes it relevant for this topic is that if you notice the upper bound of integration r, if we plug it in for x, we get r squared minus r squared is 0, we get division by 0. So this function is undefined when x is equal to r. So we would need to deal with it, get rid of some of this stuff now, we would need to deal with it the same way that we've been dealing with it in the previous videos where we take the limit. We 
substitute some value in there, let's say it's B, so we do the limit, let's say as B goes to R of the integral from zero to B of one over R squared minus X squared, that's the square root of R squared minus X squared DX. So this is how we, we deal with the fact that right here we have an improper integral in the sense that the R introduces a discontinuity into our function. And then we can integrate this either using trigonometric substitution or we can just read uh, the, in, uh, the integral pattern out from the comprehensive table of uh, integrals that you have. So we have this identity. So if we apply this identity, we would get don't want to lose my 4r right there. We have a 4 times r. <clears throat> so using this identity, we would get the limit as b goes to r of the constant 4r, which we could also factor out. We could factor it all the way to the front because the limit of a constant is a constant. 4r times the limit as b goes to r. And now apply the pattern the sine inverse, we get the sine inverse of x over a, but r is playing the role of a, so we get x over r, and this would be evaluated from 0 to b, and then we plug in our limits of integration, so we would get 4 times r times the limit as b goes to r <coughs> of the sine inverse we plug in uh, we plug in b we get b over r minus the sine inverse of 0 over r which is just 0 and then we're in a position now to evaluate things we have 4 times r times what's the limit as b goes to r of the sine inverse of b over r well nothing bad's going to happen if we plug r into this the limit of b over r as b goes to r is just r over r or 1. So we wind up with the sine inverse of 1 minus, and what is the angle whose sine is 0? Well, the angle whose sine is 0 is just 0. <clears throat> so now we have 4r times the sine inverse of 1. So what is the angle whose sine is 1? Well, on the unit circle, we have the ordered pair up here at the top, 0, 1, after we uh, swing through pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. So the angle whose sine is 1 is pi over 2. 2 goes into 4 twice. We get 2 times the pi times the radius as the circumference of the entire circle. So this, this actually derives from scratch the circle circumference formula. So this would be one way to come up with that formula if you didn't know what it was.